first problems you're going to encounter, the main ones, is all the cables coming from your motor, uh, running through basically a uh, side of your scooter in the cavity, and then you've got your three main connectors um, for your power, and you've also got your block of five pin connector, which is for the hall sensors on the motor, which I'll actually show you in a minute, so we can get inside. You made it in on time. Nice one, Craig. Um, so yeah, we're going to get out to take this wire out across there, which is not too bad. It does seem a bit more difficult than changing the front one, obviously, because you've got a motor to deal with. It's not that bad. It just looks a bit daunting. Um, like I said already, I don't have replacement bearings myself. I'm just demoing this because a group member had issues with this. So this dog is determined to get in this stream. So I'm just going to whip this off, find the easiest way to get the bearings out. And um, we're either going to tap them out. But since I want to keep mine nice because I haven't got spares, I'm going to make a quick, quick bearing puller. Just using some scraps. I'll show you how to do it quickly. Just using random nuts and bolts you've got lying around the house. You don't have to buy some fancy bearing puller just to pull two bearings out your scooter. You could just use a couple of bolts and a spacer. It's a much easier way. And it's quieter than going ham with a hammer. No one wants to get Vivian West without. Not on a Friday night. Right. First things first. I've had a little pop at this. My scooter's off the road at the moment. Um, I was unlocking the speed and connecting up the LCD to the aftermarket controllers and it blew. So, until I get that sorted, mine's off the road. So anyway, first things first, you've got two Allen key bolts there and there. I think they're four mil. No, they're three mil, sorry. The Allen key's already in your toolkit. So that just drops down the side. I'm just demoing this. You don't need to see how to take out two Allen key bolts. It's very unimpressive. One goes there, one goes there, turn anti-clockwise, out comes the bolts. The only cavity with this is when you take it out, there's a little plastic clip there, a little plastic clip there. What you don't want to be doing is just yanking it straight up. You're going to snap the clip off there and there. Next time you tighten this back down, you're going to have a floppy end by there. No one wants a floppy end. It's going to come out of the frame of the scooter. It's going to look awful. Who's that, Pete? Sorry, Pete, mate. Um, I've been a bit busy. They've locked us down for 17 days. So the past two days, I've been running around trying to get enough supplies as I can. And then my scooter blows up. So that's how it goes. I'll get back to you, mate. No problem. Um, just really busy at the moment. So anyway, this is off. It's out. There's the lip I was telling you about. I'll get the camera down in a minute and zoom in. I just don't want shaky cam from the start. That's not a good sign. Easy dog. It's just a bearing replacement. So anyway, that's off. Be careful of your wires. They're connecting to your indicators. Three of them. If you need wiring diagrams, I've got them done. I just need to polish them off because there's different types of controllers. But I've got the schematics written down in nice color-coded orders. So anyone with any problems, we can just draw line to line. It's easy for me to fix them rather than me trying to do it how I have been. So the first thing I'm going to do is disconnect the three what's called bullet connectors for the motor. Obviously, you've got to take your front casing off as well, which we've all done already. Every video I'm in is me taking this front case off. So if you don't know, you can go back. It's just two bolts there and there. Out it pops to the side. There she is. Nothing fancy to get that off. Just be careful with your RGB wires. They're really thin. Oh, psychic. I know. She won't leave you, mate. It is on. So um, be careful with the RGB wires. They're very thin. They will rip away from there. They're not a nightmare to solder back on, but you don't want to go down that road. So we take the three bullet connectors out. Yellow, blue, green, top of my head. Uh, pop, pop, pop. They're mine already. Then you're left with a big block. It's the biggest block there is on the side. It looks like a six pin, but there's only five wires going in. Let me see. Positive, negative. There's three for the whole sensors. Yep, so there's only five wires going in. We disconnect that. Then we slowly pull our cable down, helping it from this end if we need to, if we feel it's snagging up on anything. If it does that snag, push it back through. It'll find a different angle to come back through the channel. So that's all we're going to keep doing. Until she pops out. Right, I've snipped mine so you can see what's going on. Plus i got to do a whole rewire job, so... Sorry, Doc. Toolbox. So these are the three wires. 
they are thick ones the first ones with the bullet connector ends they're the ones with a nice plastic sheathing over the top some of them is nice and plastic some of it's pulled away and then there's your other five wires mine are butchered but they're usually on a plastic block connector big square 10 mil by 10 mil can't miss it what tires are on here these are 10 by threes off-road tires that you can run tubeless or a 10 by 2.5 inner tube um where i live mate it's raining all the time we got gills is whales we swim so i'm lucky to be on a scooter first of all but um leaves everywhere the slicks weren't working out for me so i had to put something chunky on to grip the road where was we wires back out here we go so there to the side next thing's obvious gotta take this back wheel off now what i will say if you've got an original brake disc then it's fine great if you've got an aftermarket one it's fine great when you're taking the wheel off do not bend the brake disc no matter how much you start adjusting this caliper it is not going to make a difference if this is bent you can tweak it slightly it's still not going to make a difference much it's just one of them things so this we're taking off the brake discs as well they're not standard ones i'll show you them as well great um these are much better you go hydraulic braking if you want to but for the stopping power you actually need and then fitting the hole sensors etc it's not worth it so the bolt for the back wheel 19 millimeter if you want to be specific and you've got a socket obviously you have to use the other end i always go with adjustable spanner because it works on everything counterclockwise turn now i suggest having your scooter standing up and they're leaning against something by the handlebars don't snap your lcd display off just easier to get to left and right to loosen them off slightly so we're going to pull the plastic sock away from the nut slide the first nut back as much as we can we want to get out of the way now we always want to be mindful of this wire this wire we don't want to bend twist or move as little as possible we don't need to be wiggling this round in fact if you could secure this any better than it is i'd go with it since mine's cut it's getting a treatment to heat wrap all the way down to the core in a minute i'll show you now let's move this scooter in shot a bit better oh. right so we got the one side as for the other side let's see if i can just wiggle this round kickstand gets in the way i've loosened this side already it's exactly the same nut so there's no magic going on there she is keep all your nuts safe we'll leave that there and keep your washers safe for your left and right they're stacked in a specific order so you want to clock that when you take the back wheel off easy way is the disc side has only got one spacer the other side's got three and there goes the wheel right so we got the wheel off that's a cracking start let's move everything out the way let's get into the wheel right this wire we're not going to pick the wheel up by the wire that'd be bad news we're going to respect the wire sounds stupid but if you pop a cable if you pop one of these cables it's close to this stem which is easy to do i've seen hundreds of these it is easy just to get this cable and to chip it away on the metal pin there ideally you want to run something down there like heat wrap or something to slide inside and take the brunt of the force off that so anyway keep an eye on your cable next thing is the disc brake uh disc brake brake disc there you go tomato tomato i suppose so that's coming off next where's the tool your normal one is an m5 i've swapped mine out so i'm on torx bits you don't, haven't got to watch me struggle to take all these out i've done it anti-clockwise turn to undo on most things not all things i've took the six out already i've left two in so it didn't bend up on the scooter keep them all safe 
you don't want to be losing them but this is how you can change your disc as well by popping the wheel off this way and doing it like this all right then we want to keep this brake disc nice and safe and the wire safe right there's a brake disc uh, oh. Oh. right uh, that's one from Amazon fourteen pound for the pair they they're better than the originals basically they stop um to go with them I also went to Halfords and bought a set of organic disc pads it was nine ninety nine each they fitted straight in so what we got nothing on this side the spaces are off we're left with our spaces off this side our wire now we've got these one two three four five six allen key bolts all the way so they're coming off next because the bearings are actually i don't know if you know they're inside the spindle there and one's inside the spindle there they help your wheel rotate while the spindle stays static now if you've got a bad bearing you should be able to feel when you push down left and right the spindle you'll feel a crunch you'll, you'll feel the balls inside crunch you'll know it's bad these two don't feel too bad as it goes so okay let's get it off anti-clockwise turn five mil allen key bolt in the toolkit they wasn't i'll be honest when i undone these just to have a quick look inside they weren't even done up as far as i'm concerned obviously you don't go crazy with all your strength and go he-man but they wasn't done up the dog could have undone them you watching right there what's that talk with when i move no she bailed all right two left and then we get to look at what's inside here uh, we can also spot a few motor faults by just having a look inside the motor. Um, well, symptoms are bad sounding motors first of all. Motors not working when the controller is fine and the LCD is fine. Um, sometimes it's as simple as one of the hole sensor cables that come off one of the pads. I'll show you that now though. Right, this is magnetic. This is going to want to suck your fingers in this gap and take the tips off as best they can. By that I mean there's a circle disc there it's magnetic we need to pop this disc off there without it sucking back down on us so you either go all or you go nothing because if you start giving it a little bit of this it's going to go and knock your hands back down so you can get a bit of leverage using some old school tire levers the ninth well the 20 pence versions two knife handles two spoons anything in there to take your fingers out of there Mm -mm -mm. so we go all or we go nothing she's off all right let's take all this off here this nonsense am i going to be able to nope my wire's in the way uh, i've got a bump in my wire i've made an extra connection at the indicator side for when i was testing other stuff and the mods my scooters took a bit of a battering so that wire is going to have to be cut. I'm not too worried about it because I'm rewiring the whole thing. I'm running fresh cable. So just for you. I've just created 15 minutes extra work for myself. Let's not keep this short. Don't do this. It's unnecessary. I think. What are we left with? It's bearing number one. Well, that's the easy one to get to. That just involved taking the back wheel off. Long process, but still easy. Involve popping this cover off. And there's one. Now the trick to this one is straight away is a black rubber seal. You want to get that rubber seal out. That protects the bearing from the splashes, etc. So don't break it. But still, they got to come out. 
Hold on. This is not too far off as you aren't we wheel to be honest. Did you get this river seat on us? Grab it with pliers. Come on. There you go. Here he pops out. Pop rubber seal out. Step one. Put him on the side. Now you can see the bearing face from the other side of the main cavity, the main hole. I'm trying not to talk too technical here. So you want to be coming from this side. Now this one looks like an easy one to pop out. All you need is something that's wider than the actual hole i.e. drop one of your spacers in, or a spare spacer, spare spacer, don't use one of your spares, uh, spacers from the scooter, just in case it bends, use a scrap one. So we're going to drop one in there, and we're going to put something on the top, then when we tap lightly, it's going to spread the load on the case of the bedding, and just pop it out nicely that side, that's the theory. What do you reckon? Anyone we'll take bets? Next door is gonna kick. I'll make a bearing puller on the next side, just to show you both ways. Shouldn't take much. It took a tap. Bearing out, load spreaded. And that's not bad. As bearings go, that feels fine. That's the model. Uh, 6003 RS bearing. Now that's RS. That's ball. You can get needler bearings which are better. I don't know if they take the weight. So at least I know when I'm holding bearings in a minute. Or when I can afford bearings in a minute. A 6003 RS version. Um, So basically the front is 6000. The rear is 6003. The last digit must relate to the actual inner bore of the spindle of the bearing. Anyway, that's out. We're inside this. First thing, wipe your hands. It's clean time. You don't want no dirt, nothing going inside of this. Let's have a quick tour. Hmm. Right, your motor's coming. Uh, your wire's coming from this side into your motor. Don't know if you can make out. On this side, I've got the three uh, hole sensor wires, blue, yellow, and green. It's really bad to see them. And the positive and negative 5 volts that powers up the actual board, the logic, etc. Um, the other three cables are still running through. I'm not familiar with this design, but they just look like they run straight into the armature to power it to rotate. So nothing fancy. So now we've got to get this motor out. This is magnetic as well, because obviously there's a magnetic wheel on the outside and there's a spindle on the inside with the opposite magnets there. Or attracting magnets they would be, yeah. So when I pull this now, it's going to suck back in bye bye fingers. Good news is we got a spindle on this side that gives us an inch and a half of leverage. So if we keep it straight and true and push down, that will pop up that inch and a half. So we got something to wiggle with. What we don't want to do is play with all this copper wire. All these wires here are going to stay away from me. Point it away from us. Don't even look at it. Right, so we're going to push down. That popped up. Now here's the hard bit, because it's going to... Let me demo it, why not? You can see it's popped up there. Keep your fingers away. You want to keep it clean, you want to keep your fingers too. If you watch when I release the pressure I've got on it back up, you should just want to suck back in. That was quite stiff. That was disappointing. I might grease this while I'm in here. So anyway, watch them fingers force back down. God love knees. One and two. Ugh. Yeah, I've got a headset mic on. It's Corsair. They are cheap bearings, I know. Come on. Straight and true pull, and she's out.
Oh, it's a taffy. It's because the moat is so broad. If it was a Xiaomi one, it'd just pop out. Hmm. And what would be the right way of doing it? The right way would be with the special tool to reach down into the cavity and pull the last bit out. That would be the right tool. Huh. Bear with me, we're having a thinking moment. Is how much of the coil is still magnetic? Basically, how much of the lip is in there? Should be able to pull it out. Let me stand up. This is coming out. My board's a bit already. Get on there. There you go. Got a man up. Right, if in doubt, man up. There's a lesson there. This is going to want to suck back in when we put it back in. Oh, yeah. So that's how that works. It's caught by the last 5 mil, which is giving it pull, magnetic pull back down. Where are I, mate? We, we, we just brooded that. It didn't take much, to be honest, right? I'll be honest, that was like pulling up a sticky drain. It was nothing major. Want to keep it clean, though? I'll be honest, there's not supposed to be... You can get oil, actually. Because this looks rough as nuts. Anyway, let's keep this out of the way. Make sure the wires are safe. Make sure the dog don't attack it. We're in yet. You see, it's the wheel lined with magnets. That's the opposite over there for the magnets. Um, I'm not going to explain that unless you want me to. Yeah, elbow grease, that's right, mate. Um, yeah, I'm not going to explain how magnets work. Come on, guys, you've got a fridge. One goes one way, one goes the opposite way. Makes it go woof. Add an electric, more woof. Right, so that's the bed in there. As for popping this one out, let's have a look. Perfect. We got the same rubber seal deal on this side. So that's got to come out. Let me get a screwdriver. You could just flex the seal in. It's soft rubber, like a silicone or something. Nothing special. You see, right there, the seal looks a bit different. Hold on. The seal does look different. Bear with me, lads. I may as well get it right. I think the seal is attached to a rubber socket to fit it in. So to get this seal out, mm -mm. I think you've got to really come from the underside of it. So no stabbing your seal up midway when it comes to taking this out, lads. I.e. no finding a gap, stabbing it in and trying to pry it out. Go past the seal and pop it up from underneath it. That's that one. Mm -mm -mm. Same bearing, obviously. Well, you never know, but yeah, it is the same bearing. Same principle applies when popping this out. Let's place it on top. Get yourself something. Quick tap, like you see me do. Now, if you want to go fancy, I got five. Get yourself a net. You get yourself two other nets. And a big spacer. Not your one off your scooter. Uh, which one's not my one off my scooter? Ah, go on, I'm not going to put no faults. Let me see. Put your spacer on your nut. Put. Yeah, your nut through there. Now, this is a poor man's way of doing it. 
But if you're stacking it to the left, stacking it to the right, so you've got that, hold it together, put another nut on that side with a spacer. Give it a bit of tension to hold the other two nuts on the other side. Et voila. And then you just start cracking down on this nut. It's not going to give him much space. Oh, sorry, we do the other side because the bearing gets pulled the other way. Same principle. You just keep cracking down on this nut and it's going to draw it up that 5 mil. We do it from this side instead. If someone wants a diagram of that saving by a 7 pound bearing puller, two bearings, let me know. So, putting this back together, I'm not going to take this one out because it's exactly the same as the other one. Make sure nothing's stuck to the inside. We're looking good. Right, let's put the motor back in. Hmm. This should just be a drop in. Let me see. Everything's back in there. Bearing's in there. Uh, grommet goes the other side. Cool. So this is just going to get dropped in, wires facing up. Hey, see how she grabs? That's why I kept my hand away. You know, just pinky there. Kept everything away. I put it near it, it just sucked it straight back in. That's what I meant about fingers. So this is a watch your fingers job. What's our viewers like? Eh, it's going on YouTube, so that'll do. So we got that on. Next, we need to put, or well, I need to put my bearing back in this. You would have swapped jaws. Put the bearings in. Get them as flat as you can. You might get lucky and just pop them in. Nope. Oh, it's going to make me pull it in. I'm making the bearing puller. There it goes there. What a nightmare. Oh, this is the bearing puller in action then. I'd rather suck the bearing through than tap the life out of it. Oh, should I be bothered? No, I can hit it flush once. Why not? Let me go get some lube. That always helps. Let me tap it back out. Let me get the loop. Bear with me. Shouldn't really say that on stream. There you go. Now they are supposed to press it in tight so the bearing doesn't rotate inside the collar. So, not a lot. Just make my life easier. That'll do. It's flat. Right, last tap of the night. There you go. That was more than a tap. Neighbors are going to fucking bleep. So that's in. Watch the lube. Right, we're going to get our wire, slide it back through the hole, make sure everything spins nice. we to make sure that bearing you just took all the time to stick in is spinning perfectly fine. And we're going to slide that wire in. This might get magnetic, so keep your fingers away. Let me see if I can feel it gripping. Mm. Nope, you're alright there. It's not gripping. <sighs> Six allen bolts back in. This is the tedious bit. But this is the bit that's worth getting right. If it goes wrong, it's bad news. Don't cross screw any of your bolts, uh, cross thread them, sorry, in the holes. When you're putting them in, go with the clock. 
I said this plenty of times. 12. Keep them loose as well. 6. I said keep them loose. See, this is what I mean. If you, I started cracking down number 12 first of all. Then it wouldn't have been loose. Going on here. Yeah. There you go. It's just a difficult one. So we got 12, 6, 9, and 3. We're going to do the other ones. And then at least we know the plate is in place. And then we can go tighten them down. Don't go nuts tightening them. You don't want to go snapping off the heads in case you ever got to go back in again. Same time. You also don't want your wheel falling apart going down the road. What you got left? Hmm. And I'm going to check to make sure the wheel still rolls. I'll show you a quick way of getting all this wiring back up the column. So you're not there going crazy because it keeps getting caught on this and that. Because that happens. So now we'll start tightening these down a bit. So that one's too bad getting to them. Could have been worse. I think I'm going to strip that front end off again and do a nice steering pin. Found an extra thing I could stick on that that might help. Just got to get to it. <clears throat> it's easier to turn the large wheel than the small anky. There we go. After this, obviously, this goes back on. Make sure it's pointing in the right direction for rotation. Some people don't think of that, but the disc is marked with a little arrow pointing which way it should rotate. I.e., if your wheel's going like that across the floor, the arrow should be pointing that way, because that's the way the disc should be rotating. The marking usually goes on the inside of the wheel, but that depends on the manufacturer. Alright, are we looking? Oh, we got one more. Even in. Yeah. I suppose they've all got to be tightened up. up. Yeah, you're definitely going to have to go round the clock on this. This pushes the magnet back in place. Everything's gone loose again. Well, this is boring as hell. Sorry, lads. It's the got done, though. Yeah, keep going over these bolts all the way round. Because they're not all going in sweet at the same time. It seems like it's, the magnet's driving itself out by about 5 mil, so you're pushing the magnet back in every time. So you've got to keep going over these bolts again and again to make sure. I think I got them all. That one's fine. That one's fine. That's one. And we'll make sure he still rolls. 
put the grommets in both sides. One. And two. They're different sizes, one smaller than the other, so you're not going to get them mixed up. That's why I didn't bother showing you. And then, let's see if it still rolls. It should do. And, yeah, it's fine. So there you go. There's a bearing change. It feels just as it did earlier on, though, because it didn't actually change the bearings. I'm just demoing it for you. So that's not too bad. Discs marked with the rotation. The arrow. Pointing that way. Oh, that way. It's pointing any way. Well, look which way it's pointing. That's the way you want it to roll down the road. So my arrow's pointing that way. I'm putting it face inwards like that because it's going to roll down the road that way. Again, let them play the clock game. 12, 6, 3, and 9. You can get that on a t-shirt soon, I think. Let me take a seat at this point. Call in victory and check in the chat. But yeah, let me see. 41 minutes to change. Two rear bearings on the motor wheel. And is it worth it? I didn't change mine. Can't comment on the rear did change my front the other day live on stream that made a huge difference and now on a drive wheel that's just a normal front wheel so if it makes a difference on that I'm expecting it to make a difference on the rear I just wish I had the bearings to change and I would have but at least now when someone asks there's a video up here and on YouTube Check the chat, see if there's any questions or anything. No, it's pretty quiet. I'm gonna see if I can get some more heat shrink over this wire because I think it needs protecting a bit more than it is currently. Honest. And I think the main connection for it from now on in, because I don't want to be taking the front of my scooter off every time to disconnect my motor, I'm going to move all the block towards the rear indicator, which is much easier to take off and remove the motor if I need to, than go through the front and deal with all them wires. So that's the plan for that. That's why I didn't mind just cutting it clean off. So we're getting reworked. Alright, so they're all down. We're missing one. Okay, it's fine. You don't want to see me stick this back on, I'm pretty sure. It's a basic wheel. This was all about the bearings. So unless there's any questions, I'm going to just tighten this up for the next couple of minutes. And we'll call it a night. And I'll deal with my own... Well, I'll show you how to get the cable back up the side. There's an easy way. Grab yourself something long, coat hanger. You can see where we're going with this. A stiff piece of wire. Anything longer than the cavity, we've got to stick this big cable through in a minute. Um, and some cell tape, electrical tape, or any tape. And we'll just chase the cable through rather than trying to push the cable through. Sounds silly, but some people don't know. So, may as well show you, or at least tell you. Right, that's on. It's not bent. Make sure you don't bend your discs. Everything is rolling freely. Check all the way along. I'm holding the shaft stiff. No, oh God. If so, that can't move. And I'm pushing down. The wheel's rolling forward. So we're all good. Oh, let's get Scooty Scoot back in the frame. I'll just show you the cable. I'm going to use this. This is where I just cut off scrap. So you get your coat hanger, your long piece of stiff cable, your anything you've got. Rather than try and push 
the wires that comes off this in the connector which is a big block up through there and have you pop out there so you can plug it back in get yourself something long like that push this down the cavity instead because it's much easier to grab that then get your block connector and your three pin etc tape it to there to your motor wire so it's nice and smooth as in the connectors are not going to catch up on something do you know what I mean and then slowly start dragging this cable back through and it'll feed the rest of your cables through the actual column because trying to push it through there again past the charger port and all the other wires that's going to get a bit of a struggle so that is that no questions cool right then any of the problems pop up i'll live stream them we'll sort them out i'm going to take the front end off as soon as i can i've got to send a few of you tracking numbers i managed to get all my posts off today so that's that the epoxy plates dried lovely as well the deck boards um so they're just ready for inlays on top and they can be shipped out um apart from that that's me for the evening any more questions just message me right nice one lads and ladies <laughs>